Man, good morning. Man, it's good to see all of you here today. So nice outside. I hear that um, everyone's coming over to my house to rake leaves later. So I appreciate that. No, I don't see any takers. Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are glad that you're here this morning, whether you're watching in the building or maybe you are watching online today. And, and uh, man, I'm just excited that you took some time out of your busy Sunday to come and hang out with us. And isn't that new van nice? So nice. Thank you for giving. Many of you gave in the One Day for Family Church offering, and we were able. It's so nice whenever you can go into the, the car dealership and just pay cash. Isn't that nice to be able to do that? And so we were able to do that, and we're so grateful that you guys are generous givers and that you live as stewards of everything that God has given you to manage. And it has shown up in your lives, and it has shown up here. As Pastor Kevin said, we have so much going on. This Christmas season is crazy. We will be giving you a ton of information over the next couple of weeks about everything that's going on. We've had some great Christmases here at Family Church. I believe that this year is going to be the very best. Uh, So many exciting things, special guests, special performances. Um, I'm super excited about our Christmas series I'm going to start a new series soon called Deliver Us. We're going to talk about how that Mary delivered a baby and the baby delivered me, right? And uh, delivered you as well. And it's going to be, I'm so excited about that series. I've I've had it written for a while and, and I've just been waiting to get to share that information with you. But right now we are, we are in between series. And whenever we are in between series, I get to share with you what is most on my heart. And that makes me excited. And, and over the next three weeks, you're going to be talking about some things that are most on my heart right now. Next Sunday morning, we're going to talk about defeating insecurity. If you're here and maybe you've never felt like you measured up or maybe you feel like um, uh, you're nobody or that you don't have what it takes, next Sunday is going to be your day. And we're going to jump into... Um, into uh, what it means to be secure and, and how that you can defeat those, those feelings of not being enough in your own life. And, and you know what? I don't know anybody who feels like they have it all together in every area of life. And so we're going to jump right into that and, and hopefully get you, get you some good help. But this morning, I'm really excited about the information that I'm going to share with you. And I know that, that um, everybody got an extra hour of sleep last night. Did anybody not get an extra hour of sleep? I know we didn't. We got home late. But, but um, you guys should be fresh. You should be ready to listen, ready to receive from the Lord, right? All right. I know that you are. Man, if you have your Bible today, I want you to turn to two places with me. We're going to be in, in 1 Kings chapter 10 here in just a moment. And then we're going to be in Matthew chapter 12. And uh, I thought a lot about what I wanted to uh, title the teaching this morning, and we're just going to title this teaching, Jesus is Greater Than Solomon. And you're going to know why that title is so important here as we start moving through the information, but Jesus is greater than Solomon. A couple of weeks ago on a Sunday morning in our Secrets to Victory series, I was talking about King Solomon of the Old Testament. And I know that many of you were here for that series. And, and that morning as I was talking about King Solomon, I, um, I just could not get away from his life. And so I went back and I started to read everything that I could and everything that I could get a hold of about this guy named Solomon. And we even talked about this a little in the series, how that at the end, Solomon had a lot of unresolved issues in his life. And a lot of those unresolved issues um, uh, were around relationships that he had and it ended up tarnishing his legacy but in the beginning there was no one equal to him and um, his brilliance and his wisdom is something that I love to study and we know that Solomon wrote at least three books in the Bible um, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon and today um, I'm going to drop an avalanche of information on you, okay? And I don't know that you're going to be able to take notes and keep up with me, but I'm going to drop an avalanche of information on you, and I really hope um, that you can get as excited about this as I am. Um, to be thorough this morning, there's one person excited. All right. 
To be thorough this morning, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that, that you know nothing about King Solomon of the Old Testament. You know, sometimes we get up and we say, you guys, we say, hey, everybody knows the story of so-and-so from the Bible, but we forget that not everybody knows those Bible stories. And this morning, I'm going to pretend like you don't know anything about this guy named King Solomon, and, and um, we're going to just begin to download some things about his life, and then we're going to shift over and we're going to talk about Jesus. But in the Old Testament, there was a, there was a king who, who everyone was drawn to. And, you know, some people in life just have a magnetic personality. You know, people like that. You know, people are standing in line just to be around them. King Solomon was one of those guys. Um, but the primary reason that people were drawn to him is because he had supernatural wisdom that was given to him by God. Now, he received this wisdom from God during a time of prayer. I bet you that Solomon is happy that he didn't skip his prayer time that morning. God gave him that wisdom through a time of prayer, through a time when Solomon was seeking him and asking for answers and looking for truth. And God dropped all this uh, wisdom on his life that we get to be the beneficiaries of. Now, in a day without airplanes, in a day um, without cars, um, anytime someone couldn't figure out a problem, they came to Solomon, okay? Um, he was like... He was like the Google of his day. You guys familiar with Google? Did you know that in your pocket there is more information than what they had to put a man on the moon? Did you know that? That in every smartphone there's more technology than to put a man on the moon? And so here's the thing. Anytime we want to know something, we just ask Siri. Right? I didn't test this out. I probably should have because the internet in here is sometimes not that great. But let's just see if it will work this morning. Hey, Siri. Who was Solomon? Solomon, also called Jedidiah, was a monarch of ancient Israel and the son and successor of David, according to the Hebrew Bible and the Old Testament. Shall I continue? No, that's enough. <laughs> Don't you wish all women work like that? Let's keep going. <laughs> hey, Siri. Uh -huh. How many miles to the sun? Here's an answer from scenesandnotes.org. The average distance between the Earth and the sun is about 93 million miles. Good to know. <laughs> Let's try one more. In case you ever want to go there, right? Hey, Siri. She's mad now. <laughs> hey, Siri. Uh -huh. What's my name? You're Larry, but you asked me to call you gorgeous. I got nothing to say about that. <laughs> How many of you know we live in the information age? Yes. If we want to know something, we just pull out our phone and we know it. But they didn't have information back in Solomon's day. And so God, he was literally, I just want you guys to get a hold of this. He was literally the Google of his day. And I'm not, like, I'm not making a joke about that. He was literally the Google of his day. There wasn't anything that he didn't know. And that's important. Let's go ahead and read about Solomon and an encounter that he had with someone who was coming to him looking for wisdom. It's in 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 1. It says, it says, when the queen of Sheba heard about the fame of Solomon and his relationship to the Lord, she came to test Solomon with hard questions. Arriving at Jerusalem with a very great caravan with camels carrying spices, large quantities of gold and precious stones, she came to Solomon and talked with him about all that she had on her, <clears throat> on her mind. 
Solomon answered all her questions. Nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. I want to read that again, guys. That's so important. It says, nothing was too hard for the king to explain to her. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and their burnt offerings he made at the temple of the Lord, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, the report I heard in my own country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe these things until I came and saw with my own eyes. Indeed, not even half was told me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. How happy your people must be. How happy your officials who continually stand before you and hear your wisdom. Praise be to the Lord your God who has delighted in you and placed you on the throne of Israel. Because of the Lord's eternal love for Israel, he has made you king to maintain justice and righteousness. Now, with that story in mind, let's flip over to the New Testament and go to Matthew chapter 12. Because Jesus is going to talk a little bit about Solomon. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 38, it says, Then some of the Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. And he answered, A wicked and adulterous generation ask for a sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented of the preaching, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and now someone greater than Jonah is here. Now look at this. He says, The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom. He's talking here about, about the Queen of Sheba. Now look what he says. He says, and now something greater than Solomon is here. The Passion Translation says it like this. There is one greater than Solomon speaking to you. There is one greater than Solomon speaking to you. Now this, this was a huge claim because the people Jesus was talking to knew about Solomon. They knew about Solomon. He was an Old Testament superhero. They had record of his greatness. They had record of all the magnificent things that he had built. They had record of all of the wealth that he acquired. And most importantly, they had record of the wisdom that Solomon expounded because they would have had the book of Proverbs. They would have had the book of Ecclesiastes. And so Solomon is someone they were very, very, very familiar with. And so now here is this home carpenter and he's saying to them I am greater than Solomon now in the natural that doesn't make much sense does it we read about one encounter that King Solomon had with Sheba they had many many documents of his wisdom and account and all the encounters that he had had with various people and now we have this homeless carpenter that's standing in front of them and telling them that he is greater than Solomon so guys my role this morning is to simply convince you of the greatness of Jesus. Because if I can convince you that Jesus is greater than Solomon, then I can convince you that he's greater than anything that you will ever face in this life and that he does, in fact, have power over death, right? And so that's, that's my role this morning, is to convince you of the greatness. When Jesus said a greater than Solomon is here, we're going to back that up this morning with some information. Now, Jesus made some very powerful claims about himself. He, he did this in order to set the stage for his resurrection. And here's what I mean by that. If, he, if, he, if Jesus actually came out of the grave, then everything that he said about himself would have to be true. If he actually came out, then everything that he said about himself would have to be true. Do you know anybody who is just all talk but no results? Don't point at them right now. They have the answers for the world, but they can't even keep their own lives together. They know all the answers for your life, but they can't even make their own kids mind. Oh, come on. Get more excited than that. You know these people. 
I see some grins out there. But I'm not judging them. I'm just describing them. That's how you get around that. Anyway, that was not Jesus. That was not Jesus. Jesus had to say some things that would be hard to believe so that when those things came to pass, be, people would believe not just what he said, but also in him as the son of God. And I want to give you some examples of some of the things that Jesus said that were hard for people to get a hold of. Thinking of the darkness of sin, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Thinking of how we need a guide in this life, Jesus said, I am the way. Thinking of how we need protection, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd and I give my life for my sheep. Thinking of how we sometimes struggle to produce the fruit of the spirit, Jesus said, I am the vine and you guys are just branches. Thinking of how death would hunt and stalk each one of us, Jesus said this. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Listen, all of these radical statements would mean nothing if Jesus did not have the credentials to back all of that stuff up. And so he had to, he had to, um, he had to walk the talk. Right? He had, to, he had to show people that he was who he said he was. And so when Jesus said to people, I am greater than Solomon, that was, that was a big deal in that day. And Jesus was going to have to do more than just say it. He was going to have to show it and demonstrate that in his life, which he did. And I'm so thankful that he did. And lucky for you this morning, I have done all the research. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that right now. Um, number one is this, Jesus, number one, was not confused about who he was. And, you know, sometimes we are confused about who he is, but Jesus was not confused about who he was. He knew that he was the son of God. He knew that he um, had come to the earth to save people from their sins. He knew um, about the cross. He knew about the resurrection. He was not confused about, about, he, about who he was. And what is interesting to me is how that is Jesus is telling them that he was greater than Solomon and that he was greater than Jonah, I might add. There was no response from the people in the crowd. And again, the people in the crowd knew the story of Jonah. They, to them, Jonah was also an Old Testament superhero. And so now Jesus is comparing himself to Jonah, and, and he's comparing himself to Solomon. Now, in my mind, this is how my mind works. In my mind, I'm piecing together what this crowd of people must have been thinking as Jesus is standing there telling them, that he's greater than Solomon. I made a list. They had to have been thinking, Solomon was a king born in a palace. You are a carpenter's son born in a stable. Solomon came from the great city of Jerusalem. You come from the tiny village of Nazareth. Solomon drank from golden vessels. You ask a drink from a Samaritan harlot. Solomon lived in a mansion. You wander homeless. Solomon had a fleet of ships. You don't even own a fishing boat. Solomon had 14,000 chariots and 40,000 of the finest horses, and you walk the streets like a beggar. Solomon dined with kings and queens. You eat with tax collectors and sinners. Solomon made gold as plentiful as stones, and you don't even have money to pay your taxes. I just got my property taxes, and I don't either. <laughs> no, I do. I'm thankful. It's not a bad day to have taxes. It's a bad day when you can't pay your taxes, and so today is a good day, all right? Listen. Jesus didn't have the money to pay his taxes, and so, and so he, him and a buddy went fishing. I love that theology. <laughs> but you think about all of the things that I just mentioned on that list, and I'm telling you, in their mind, they had to be thinking, how in the world could this guy be greater than Solomon? 
How in the world? He's here and he's telling us that he's greater than Solomon. How in the world could he be greater than Solomon? Listen, when you find yourself in a difficult place in life, it's important for you to know exactly who Jesus is. It's important for you to recognize his greatness. It's a, it's, it's a very essential part of, of your breakthrough. We got to know who he is. And you know what? We can't get caught up in the mechanism of church. And, and we can't get caught up in the latest Christian fad. Listen, guys, it ultimately, it all has to come back to Jesus and his cross and his empty tomb, okay? It all goes back there. And I talked, you know, I mentioned Christian fads. And, you know, every culture has fads. And even Christian cultures have fads. And, and I've been doing this for 33 years full time. And I have seen many fads come through the church. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I, I'm going to tell you this. Listen, ultimately, ultimately, everything always has to come back to Jesus. Always. Always. Paul said, I, Paul said, here's what I want. I want to know him and, and the power of his resurrection. Okay. And so it doesn't matter stylistically what we're singing or, you know, um, how, how, how pastors dress or, or don't dress. Listen, ultimately what happens, it all has to come back to Jesus, right? It has to come back to Jesus. And so we have to figure out this morning that, that he is greater than Solomon, making him greater than our problems. And I'm going to pretend, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that we have some skeptics in here right now and that you're not convinced yet. And so my job over the next three hours is going to be to convince you with, with, with straight facts from the Bible that, 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 that Jesus is greater than Solomon, therefore making him greater than all of your life's problems. Okay, so the queen of Sheba came to Solomon. She said, we, the half hasn't even been told. The Bible says he answered every question that was in her heart. And if I can convince you that Jesus is greater than that, then that's a win. That's a win, okay? So let's talk about three areas or, or so, depending on time, where Jesus is greater than Solomon. Number one, in his birth. In his birth. And we're getting ready to go into that, the season of his birth um, as we celebrated as Christians Christmas. In his birth, Jesus was greater than Solomon. In his birth, Jesus was greater than Solomon. Solomon's father was a man named King David. Solomon's mother was a woman named Bathsheba. It's not a beautiful story. It's a story of adultery, murder, spiritual disobedience. It's a story of a son against a father and brothers against brothers. It's a story that ultimately led to war. It's not a great story. It's not a story that you're going to gather your children up on your lap and read to. It's not that kind of story. But of Jesus, or more accurately, but of the birth of Jesus, we read this. A virgin shall conceive of the Holy Spirit and bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus and he will save his people from their sins. Listen, the story of the birth of Jesus is a beautiful story. Amen. And we're going to dissect that story fully over four weeks here at Family Church here in just a while. But the birth of Jesus is a beautiful story. In his birth, listen, in his birth, Jesus was greater than Solomon. Think about it. By being born, Jesus divided time. We now have B.C. before Christ, and we have A.C. after Christ. So every time we look at a calendar, we are reminded that Jesus was born. With every calendar printed, with every monument erected, with every cornerstone laid, with every date written, with every birthday on your driver's license, we are declaring to the world that God's son was born in Bethlehem. So even Solomon in all of his wisdom and all of his grandeur and all of his um, lineage, all the way back to Adam, even with all of that, Jesus was still greater than Solomon in his birth. Let's move to the next one. Number two, Jesus was greater than Solomon in wisdom. Now, this one had to blow their minds, okay? Because Solomon was considered the wisest person who ever lived. 
And yet Jesus was greater than Solomon in wisdom. I have a few examples for you this morning. Solomon knew a lot about trees, but Jesus knew Nathanael under the fig tree and he knew Zacchaeus up the sycamore tree. Solomon spoke about guarding our hearts, but Jesus knew the heart of Nicodemus. Solomon knew that thoughts were powerful, but Jesus knew the secret thoughts of his disciples. Solomon talked about the dangers of prostitutes, but Jesus knew the impure life of the Samaritan woman. Listen, Jesus had more knowledge than Solomon. Jesus knows, according to the scripture, every hair on your head, which is getting easier, by the way, for me as the years pass. Jesus knows every hair on your head. Jesus knows every wrinkle on your skin. Jesus knows every worry and concern in your heart. Why? Because in wisdom, he's greater than Solomon. Solomon knew a lot about creation, but the Bible says that Jesus was the creator and without him, nothing was made that was made. I penciled this in this morning. I, I had this thought on the way to church one of the gifts of the Spirit is a word of wisdom. A word of wisdom is a supernatural knowing of information that didn't originate in your human mind. Jesus was a walking word of wisdom. Jesus was a walking word of wisdom. Solomon spoke of birds, but Jesus knows when a single sparrow falls to the ground. Man, isn't that exciting? that Jesus knows these things. Solomon spoke of stars, but Jesus dipped his finger in stardust and stretched out the skies as a tent for man to live under. Solomon spoke of beast, but Jesus caused 2,000 pigs to become demon-possessed and dive off a cliff. <laughs> Solomon spoke of wind. Jesus spoke to the wind and calmed the hurricane with the words, peace be still. Solomon fed hundreds of servants. Jesus fed 5,000 with the lunch of a small boy. Solomon knew about navigation. Jesus could be found walking on the blue water of Galilee. Solomon could enter the temple through the door. Jesus entered the upper room and appeared to the disciples, even though the door was shut and locked. Solomon prayed with his hands stretched forth, and the glory of the Lord did fill the temple for a while. Jesus prayed with his hands nailed to the cross, and the Bible says the earth shook. Guys, a greater than Solomon is here. Am I convincing you yet? He said he's greater than. He's greater than Solomon. Number next, Jesus, Jesus was a greater builder than Solomon. I, I could spend a long time on this, but I'm, I'm going to spare you all the details. But you can read it for yourself. The temple that Solomon built, magnificent. And architecture is something that really fascinates me. I've been a student of architecture most of my life and and uh, I like to draw I like to look at places and I don't know it's just interesting to me and so I was looking at this temple just reading about it in the scripture and and the temple that Solomon built it took seven and a half years to build the temple and 183,000 workers were used that's a lot it was said that 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 Solomon took it so seriously that not even the sound of a hammer was, was heard at the construction site. So for those of you who have kind of an engineering mind, can you imagine the kind of engineering that went into that where he, he thought it was so holy that not even the sound of a hammer could be used at the construction site? Can you imagine the insight and the wisdom that had to go into, into that place? Uh, when he dedicated the temple, again, we're talking about Solomon as a builder, um, when he dedicated the temple, the scripture says that 4,000 ushers served, that 4,000 musicians played in the orchestra. It says that the great choir of the Levites sang. And when Solomon prayed, the glory of God did fall for a while. And you can go into Ecclesiastes and you can read about all the things that Solomon built. He had um, all these 
magnificent gardens and all of these uh, pools of water and all of these uh, uh, colonnades and all of these, these structures that were just amazing to look at. And so we know that Solomon was, was an amazing builder. But, but do you know who is even a greater builder? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus didn't build with cedars from Lebanon, but with trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Jesus didn't use stones cut from a quarry, but living stones jointly fitted together to build a spiritual house. So even in, in his, his great building, Jesus is greater. Solomon used wooden planks to build the temple, but we know that Jesus hung on wooden planks to make us the temple. Jesus is a greater builder than Solomon. Are you, are you getting convinced? Maybe a little? All right. Maybe we'll do one more. Jesus was greater than Solomon's sacrifice. Now, this is, this is a big one. And um, I'm going to, again, I'm going to shorten it just a little. Because I do want to have some time at the end. Jesus was greater than Solomon's sacrifice. Solomon offered up so many sacrifices that the scripture said um, they can't be counted. There's, there's just too many. And when he dedicated the temple, uh, I got some numbers for you. It says, because I'm a numbers guy, like I just need to see it. When he dedicated the temple, it, it says that 120,000 sheep were offered. It says that when he dedicated the temple, 22,000 oxen were offered. And it says that the blood flowed like a river. Now, I did the math on that, and that's 308,000 gallons of blood. I was finishing up this teaching on Halloween and I was Googling how many gallons of blood are in a sheep. And I was expecting law enforcement to just show up. It's about eight in case you're wondering. That's a lot. But. And so when just in the dedication of the temple, not in, you know, not just in everyday sacrifices, which he, which he obviously did. Um, just in the dedication of the temple, Solomon shed 308,000, 308,000 gallons of blood. But Jesus did something that Solomon never did. He shed his own blood. And that makes him a greater sacrifice if you, if you doubt the amount of sacrifice, just follow Jesus to Gethsemane where, where he was in so much anguish that his sweat became like great drops of blood. Follow him to Pilate's Hall where he was beaten and crowned with thorns. Follow him to Calvary where he died for our sins, which takes us to, to 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. It says, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Jesus, a lamb without blemish or de defect, right? And so his sacrifice is greater because he gave his blood. He gave his life for us. Now, Jesus commended the Queen of Sheba for coming to Solomon because just like the Queen, the Queen of Sheba said, the half has not yet been told regarding Solomon's wisdom. If the half has not yet been told regarding Solomon's wisdom, what does that tell us about Jesus? The same, right? The half has not been told about Jesus' wisdom either. Guys, Jesus isn't just greater than Solomon. I went through all of that information. I told you I was going to give you an avalanche of information, but Jesus isn't just greater than Solomon. He, he is greater than then so much more. He's greater than any sin that you've ever committed or any sin that you will ever commit. That should make you more excited. He's greater than your greatest trouble. He's greater than your biggest problem. He's greater than your most worrisome dilemma. Listen, guys, he's greater than all of those things because, because in his wisdom, he has already been down the road and he has already got these things figured out for you. And so when Jesus told the people that he was greater than Solomon, 
Jesus wasn't just joking around. He wasn't just making small talk or trying to pass the time. He was telling them a truth that they needed to hear. And it's the same truth that you and I need to hear this morning. That no matter where we are in life or no matter where we ever find ourselves in life, we can know that there is someone that is greater Someone that is greater than anything that we're ever going to face or anything that we're ever going to go through. And you know what? That's exciting to me. Yeah. We're going to stop right there. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. I'm going to ask the musicians to come back. And, and um, first, I want to say just a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you today, God, for the people that are here this morning in the building and those that are watching online. I know they're are typically more people watching online than, than, than are even here. And I'm grateful for them. And I'm grateful for those who have joined us in person. And I know, God, that just like in Jesus' day when he was walking the earth as a man, there were skeptics. There were people that were always in the crowd where he was that needed to be convinced. And Jesus made all these incredible statements about himself that that at the time maybe weren't received and then later after he came out of the grave there was a remembering that happened and they said hey remember that carpenter um, who told us that he was the light of the world well he just rose from the dead maybe he really is remember that carpenter who told us that he was the way the truth and the life and that no man comes to the father except through him Maybe, maybe we should pay more attention to that. Jesus made all these radical claims, but then he backed them up with his life. And that's what, that's where the proof is. The proof is always in the fruit. It's never in what we say or what others say. It, it always shakes out in the fruit of it. And then the fruit, Jesus was exactly who he said he was which means that he is greater than Solomon. And if Solomon could answer all of the questions that the queen had in her heart, and still the half not yet been told, then what does that tell us about Jesus? That he can answer all of life's most difficult questions. That he can walk through us, even through the valley of, of death. What does that tell us about Jesus? That he is the resurrection and he is the life. Everything that he said about himself is true. Everything that he said about the future is true. Everything he said about the Holy Spirit is true. Everything he said about heaven is true. Everything he said about his father is true. Everything he said about the enemy is true. It's all true. It's all true because he lived it out. We see it. We've read it. We just talked about it. And so today, God, I just pray that you would show your greatness to this place this morning. We know that you're always here in presence. We know that you never leave, you never forsake. We're, we know you're always here in presence, but God, I just pray this morning that you would, that you would just unveil, Lord, your power, your, your supernatural self, God, that it would just explode in the hearts of every person under the sound of my voice right now. Lord, if Solomon were here in his royal robes, we would just kind of all be in awe of him. He was a magnificent man. If he were here and we saw like the queen, we saw his servants and his ushers and his cupbearers and his attendants. And we saw just, I don't know, the, the, the royal part of him and, and the regalness of who he is. If, if he were to come, marching down this center aisle, we would just kind of all, we would, we would all be in awe of that. We would, we would, it would get our attention. We would turn and look. I, we would, we might, some of us might kneel. Some of us might bow. Some of us uh, might just um, be rendered speechless. I don't know, but it would, it would definitely shake us up. And if, if that's true for Solomon, then how much more true should that be for Jesus? that he is here in this moment, in this place. And that, that we worship him, not as a homeless dead carpenter, but as a resurrected son of God who backed up everything that he ever said with his life. And that he is greater, he is greater. 
not just greater than Solomon, greater than our sins, greater than our sufferings, greater than our trials, greater than our problems, greater than our worries, greater than our concerns about the future. He is so much greater than everything that we would ever come in contact with. And we have got to get that in our hearts. And so we, we do pray that today, God, that you just reveal your greatness to us this morning in this, in this place right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. I want the prayer team to come. I want the band to come. And you know what? Today, guys, I don't have a plan. We're just going to go into this last song. And man, I don't know. I guess if I were facing something super hard and, and, and I felt like it was greater than me, then I would, I would come up for prayer simply as a statement of faith to say, you know what? I know that Jesus was greater than Solomon and he's greater than this that I'm going through. And I know that he is actively working on a plan for me and I submit to that, whatever it looks like. That's what I would do. If I, if I were here and I didn't know Jesus as my savior and I've never invited him to come into my heart and to forgive me of my sins, I would be right up here. I would talk to one of these prayer partners and I would say, hey, I don't, I'm away from Jesus and I want, to, I want to be near him. I want to know him. I don't want to, I don't want to not know him. I want to know him. And they're going to help you with that. Um, and if not, I don't want you to just think about Jesus. Not Jesus on a cross or Jesus in a manger, but Jesus greater than Solomon. Jesus greater than Solomon. Man, I don't know. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around that. I was trying to picture that this week. It's like, what does that look like? I know what a king looks like. I know what a, uh, like a royal procession looks like when it comes into town. I, I get all that. But to think about Jesus and just his bigness and his greatness. And today we're going we're gonna to do our very best. I don't know, maybe to, uh, to just ask the Holy Spirit to, to let us experience that, to, to, to sense that in our hearts, to worship him for who he is, who he truly is, okay? So let's do that this morning.